Hi, everybody. Welcome to week two. Um, thanks for the great feedback on social media, uh, or emails, or the forms. To be honest, I'm very excited to read all this. I'm, uh, we as a university, we are very happy to have, I think we are, we just reached 10,000 plus attendees. Uh, thank you very much for your interest. And please don't forget to use Stop Cyber Crime and, uh, you know, write your feedback on the forums live. So what are we covering today? Today we're going to cover two topics. The first topic is going to be about enumeration and then we will talk about uh, some other stuff as well. As usual, my contact details are here. Please, if you have any questions, use our uh, forms, which I'm going to show you very shortly. My email address and my Facebook is only for being in touch. Okay? So today, as I said, we will talk about scanning networks and enumeration, and we will have some demos for you. I'm at the moment at Philippines, Manila. I think I'm going to meet some of you tomorrow in the Microsoft event. So it's going to be exciting one, big one. But more exciting is today. We will talk about how you can scan networks and how we can get information from outside. So, as last week, please try to use Stop Cyber Criminals uh, hashtag and let's flood the internet with this. Let's create our own uh, trend topic, TT. All right, uh, I think we all can make a difference. All right. Just a reminder, I had so many questions over Facebook, over LinkedIn, over email. It's impossible for me to answer all these questions one by one. We have lots of administrators who is monitoring our forms. By now, all of you have access to our beautiful website, your username, your password. Once you log in, you will be able to download your materials, as you can see here. Or you can click into discussion forms and come to discussion forms. As you can see, I try to answer most of the questions. And we have really great helpers. Daryl, if you're there, thank you very much for your great support. Uh, please let us know where you live. Uh, and we're going to send you a small gift based on your choice. Probably we have beautiful CSU wines. Uh, James and Jeff, they're going to be in touch with you. And we're going to send you... A thank you gift so doesn't matter who it is if you be active in the forums and if you if you help us answer the questions of course correctly doesn't matter where you are we can send you some gifts like Amazon gift vouchers some books you know we did suggest some books in the forums maybe you will get it for free all that you have to do is just help us to answer the questions as usual warning this presentation is gonna have lots of information which you should not use in live targets or networks without permission. This is really, really important and you will do it in your own risk. All right. As you know, this class is uh, CH compatible. So today I did add some CH slides as well to, to show you also, to give you an idea of certified ethical hacking. Uh, concept from EC Council, which we give credits in our master program via IT Master Charles Sturt University. What will a hacker usually do? A hacker will always check for live system. It's like, think about, you know, you watch so many movies. For example, the bank job movie. The guys, before they go to the bank and they rob it, what they do is, they look around. Again, I hope nobody's going to complain about the earners teaching us how to rob banks, okay? It's just an example. They walk around, they look at how many security guards are there, how many cameras are there, how many uh, tellers are there, and then, so this is basically what check live system is. And then they will look to find some weak point. What, we, what the hackers do also, they will try to look for open ports. Why? Ports are windows. What is a windows doing? You know, uh, especially in Australia, most of the thieves you break the windows and come in because most of the houses, you know, we, we don't usually live in units, Australia, uh, unless you're in the city. So it's very easy target. 
What else will the hacker do? Uh, a thief will usually see if someone is at home or if there is an alarm or a camera. And hacker will check if there is an IBS, IPS, firewall. Once all this is done, they have to find out what your operating system is. So, for you, as penetration tester, it's your job to know what you're broadcasting out to the internet. I hope all of you have DMZ. I hope all of you, you know what protocols are open as the protocols are opening your windows outside to the world. Then uh, it's important to place the firewalls and do not let any packet in unless it's secure, unless it's been allowed. So if you notice there is a packet that you don't know, drop it. Uh, of course, after doing your security assessment. For your operating system, you should not advertise what operating system you are using. Why? If I know what you're using, I can go to websites such as ExploitDB. It's in the forums. We did put it, uh, and Daryl answered some great questions there. We did put it there. Do not advertise the operating system. If you remember last week, I showed you a tool by uh, Firefox. Hey, Erdo, I'll just uh, butt in for one second. I think yeah. we're seeing the bottom and the right-hand side of your screen are cut off a little bit. The bottom of the right-hand side? I have nothing there. The bottom there. and the right-hand side. Uh, so, uh, the slides are just being cut off a bit. What about like this? Better like this? Can you see I it like this? I suppose so. I wonder... Yep. That's, yes, that's better, better like I this? I know it looks a bit ugly, but uh, today I have only one screen. Usually I use two screens and it's, it fits better. I didn't carry my lap, uh, my monitor with me to Manila. I guess this is the issue. Can you see the slide better like this? Yeah, uh, pretty much. We can just see to the bottom of the uh, jigsaw pieces, so I don't know if there's anything just below those what? gray jigsaw oh, pieces. Bottom what, sorry? Uh, the jigsaw pieces, so your, your middle sort of graphic. It, All right. It okay. Right at the bottom of them. Uh, now we have to make full screen. Uh, All right. Let's. Can you see it now? There is nothing. I mean, I had just stuff in the middle. Nothing on the bottom. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Cool. Let me know if it cuts off. I can always go to smaller mode. So, back to this. We have to also look for vulnerabilities. Remember, first week we did talk. And I gave that awesome movie, Rocky Balboa. And, you know, at the final, he was boxing with that tall guy, uh, which was, you know, don't worry about the nationality. And uh, that guy noticed that Rocky Balboa had uh, some issues in his ribs. And the guy started to attack him from his ribs. Why? It was his vulnerability. So, you should scan for vulnerabilities before hackers scan you. And what the hackers will do is they will usually draw your network. Why? Because then they know how to extend their attacks. They might use some proxy servers to hide themselves behind it. And it's your job to use all these tools with permission to find out some stuff before the bad guys do. So. What are the strong tensions of today? There is a strong imitation between business and cybersecurity requirements. We have our tablets, we have our social media, we have the cloud, we have the big data. Then, in terms of cybersecurity, we have the identity management. We have the configuration management. We have the threat management. And today, the hack is getting stronger and stronger responses. So, we should start to lock all of these and separate it from each other to have a proper security strategy. We need to create a trust stack immediately. We have to be able, look, it's not your credit card which is important these days. It's your identity. 
I gave this example last week. Uh, that that four, uh, you know, the, the whole big airline, the Airbus A330, has disappeared. And there were four people with stolen passport on it. So someone used someone else's identity to go to this plane. I'm not saying this guy's done what happened to the plane, but I'm saying that this is a big vulnerability in the system which may be caused 200 plus people to die. Your data. Don't forget, most of the companies employ people for the data or data. So the idea here is we produce data, we, prote we should protect the data. So what is if you're a singer? <coughs> your data is your MP3. What is if you're a bank? Your data is the integrity of the money. What is if you're a publishing company? It's the IP. You know, you can give many different examples, but the key important here is to understand what kind of information you're using. This includes your software and hardware. Because if you don't know what software has been used in your organization, if you don't know what hardware you have got in your organization, this will cause issues to you. All right, what are the issues? If you remember, it was on the news again. Australian and American governments did ban Lenovo computers to be used. Look, I mentioned the brand. It was openly on the news. Why? They found some hardware backdoors on those laptops, on those hardware. And um, the company has been asked to remove those backdoor. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't matter what operating system you're using, doesn't matter what firewall you're using, the hardware backdoor was going to give you access to maybe Lenovo for some other stuff. Maybe it's for good purposes. But the idea here is if someone notices that, they can use this vulnerability to bring you down. All right. We all know defending network is difficult. But the question we ask here is always why. Why it is difficult. Look, uh, I got a demo here, which is called Hiena. Uh, you can just download the software yourself. I think I got it here. Hiena. I am in a public network in a hotel. Oh, just uh, ignore. As you can see, this is my computer. I can do a local. You can see my drives. You can see my users, my landguard myself you can see my local groups my printers or my registry what i'm going to do is i'm going to the next level i'm going to the enterprise level now i'm connected here in crown plaza this is illegal to do that's why i'm not gonna explain it that much but i'm going to microsoft network terminal it's going to take some time and then it will Probably show me information like that. This is uh, this was in a different hotel, okay? Uh, look at this. It was Hilton, to be honest. Uh, when I was two weeks ago in America, if you watch my tech ed session, I done live there. Look at the computer information which I found. Microsoft account, partners. I could connect to the registry which I hide here. Uh, I could see the disk space. I could get access to hidden resources. Hiena is not a brand new tool. It's a very old tool. Um, and the idea here with Hiena is, here we go, it did connect here. There is still much of account here. It doesn't allow me. Let me see the work group. I'm not sure if it's going to allow me to connect. And here we go. I already can. Look, my computer is in the network as well. Jim Carrey, someone here. I missed Akiel. I, I can try to connect it to computers just by this little software here. Of course, uh, it gives me error, but I can still. So I'm gonna stop here. I can still see the disk space. I can see this the schedules, jobs, the registry with an old tool like that. Why it's important to know about it? If I can see it, maybe the guy next door is doing what I'm doing as well. Maybe the guy next door 
is not doing it with good intention. And to be honest, hackers love hotels. Why? They love airports. Why? Because the second you connect, you go to a, like I'm in Manila, Philippines at the moment. The second I came here, uh, I did try to find a free wireless because roaming is too expensive. I did connect to a free wireless. Yes, my antivirus on my phone warned me, said, hey, Odo, you are on an unsecured network. Are you sure you want to continue? I said, yes, because I had no chance. And I was starting the hotel network. But if someone is sniffing my computer, my network, they can easily collect information, information which is not encrypted, as HTTP, as FTP, as IMAP, as SMTP, is sending uh, the password information or clear text. What else can we do? I mean, the hackers usually will scan the networks. There are three different scanning types. They can do port scanning. What is the port scanning? Basically, they will send a couple of messages via some tools into the network, and they will try to gain some information. Uh, what I'm going to do is now, here's my tools. Uh, not this one here. A IP scan. Another free old tool. I'm just gonna run the program without even installing it. Run. And uh, to be honest, I don't know what network I am in. Let's find out. I think you all know IP config. I hope you do. <laughs> uh, the IP address is 172.27.11.1. Let's scan 172.27.11.255. Scan. I'm going to let this scan happening in the background. Okay. Ah, oh, here we go. I don't even have to do that. And as soon as I do that, I can see all live IP addresses, uh, which has been given out. Uh, at this stage, only I'm live. Nobody seems there. But you can see, look, I know this is my computer, but in some cases, you can see users, you can just explore information, you can just, uh, you can just uh, ping it, let's see if this computer is up, no it's not, there you go, we found something here, Murata Manufacturing, a computer which is here, uh, I can try to explore it, beautiful, probably it has a firewall. I can um, try to shut it down. I'm not going to do that. Let's ping it. As you can see, this computer is active. Let's uh, try to RDP on it. I think you got the idea. Uh, it looks like it's connecting. I'm going to cancel it because what I'm doing is not legal. Uh, if it is Redmin, you can use some other t software. I can try to shut it down. I can uh, basically use some uh, Telnet SSH tool to connect into it. Here's another one. Here's another one. I can see the MAC addresses. It's perfect opportunity for me to max spoofing. Uh, you know, the first four digits of the MAC address will show the manufacturer. So, uh, this is a good opportunity for me to dig in again. And that's not the aim today, what we're doing here. But uh, I'm just trying to show you why it's important to have a firewall. Because as soon as you connect here, here we go. Look at this. This guy, connect. This guy, 
is using a access point. Oh, that's bad. Uh, current IP address, MAC address, wireless, regularity. So I don't know the domain, right? I don't know the password. So what I can do is I can go to default password.com. Uh, what is the model? Copy this. It's HP. Go to HP. What was the model number again? Uh, e MSM 460. You know, it's one of these here. The username is most of the time MGR. The password is, you know, one of these. Or I can go to my favorite search engine and or you know how to hack HP so you don't have to really ultra smart you can just uh, watch some videos and they will show you how you can hack is it me? what is it me? Uh, this noise, I hope you can hear what I'm hearing. Uh, let me close this, that's not nice as well. <laughs> uh, do you understand what I can do with this? I can just watch some videos and get some um, default username, password. Uh, I don't have anything here yet, I'm not gonna click anything yet. I can find uh, if they're not using up-to-date software. I can just, uh, I can just uh, try to find vulnerabilities and bring them down if necessary. How did I find that? Via well, a simple tool which is free. Here is a MacBook, MacBook in a uh, MacBook. I can just shut down. I'm not going to click on it. I think you got the idea, right? Here is another one. Let's do a NetBIOS name. So let's see if it's using NetBIOS name. Uh, I can, you know, I don't know if you notice, I can copy the user, I can copy all and paste it somewhere, which I'm not going to do now. It's beyond this, uh, it's beyond topic, today's topic. Do you understand it? So, the next step will be vulnerability scanning. I mean, what I done was sort of vulnerability scanning as well. I did try if they have RDP. If they have RDP enabled, I was going to be able to connect them to them. And maybe I can run the Bruce Force attack. Uh, or I can use a network scanning, uh, exactly what i done. I can use also another software, which is called, I think we did talk about it last week. Uh, come on, Adil. Metasploit, I forgot the name. Metasploit. Come on, Metasploit, don't disappoint me. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Uh, probably the oh. service has not been started. All right, I'm going to move on. Uh, you saw me last week. Uh, I got a recording which I can show you this as backup. So, what you need to know about network scanning? You should know that. Look, I done with good intention. This two, three tools, which is all like, I had this in a presentation a couple of months ago. They're using all tools, 
it's not about how to how easy tool is. It's all about how important it is you can protect yourself against all tools. If you can't even stop all tools, how are you gonna use the new tool, the zero die attacks to stop your attack? How are you gonna protect yourself? And this is the question that we should ask ourselves. So uh, I can use for example Zen Map, okay? Zen Map GUI. You, you can just download it from mmap.com. I can just put the IP address target there. I think I pasted it in. Remember that's the MAC address which I copied. Scan. And uh, it thinks I'm in Australia. It's going and scanning the MAC address. Probably it's going to find something. And it did find something. Uh, it didn't actually. I should put the IP address there instead of MAC. Uh, this is going to go ahead and scan it. It's going to take some time. Uh, but the idea here is it's going to find the host, the ports, and the services of a network. And it will maybe gain the bad guy the access to go into your network. James, do you have any questions so far? Uh, yep, Maxim asks, so Erdel, do you have permission to scan the hotel's network? Good question. <laughs> uh, as you noticed, uh, this was just a demonstration and if you remember last week I said do not do what I do, do what I say. But uh, the answer is no. <laughs> That's good. Well, we won't tell anyone except the few hundred people here. Yeah. Any other questions? couple of questions here. That uh, Joshua question, asks, by the way. <laughs> how can you make these ports safe? Alright, um, using firewalls. You should close any port that you don't need. So, uh, of course port 80 is the exception, port 53 is an exception, but any port that it's not in use should be closed. How can you know? Uh, you can go again to your PowerShell or CMD or the equivalent tool, net state. As you can see, you will see the ports at uh, uh, net state. So I'm going to put net state slash an. It will show the protocol, the port, and where I'm connected. Local port 737. Different different ports. I got connection at the moment, but they're local host, no problem. Uh, there are some connections between me and some other service, so you can always go. You can always put O at the end and see the process IDs as well, like which process ID is doing what. Or one of my favorite tools, you can come to. I'm in a sys internals, which I'm use, which I'm going to use now, the ultra support tool for Marcos Novich. Okay, the tool is called uh, TCP View. It's free. It will also show you look, the port which is in communications. And at even better than that site, it shows at the moment, hey, look at this. I'm using GoToNetwork, the port number, the computer name, and the connections. Like you will see Outlook, you will see. So if you don't know what it is, you can always uh, go to the properties. Ah, it's a Metasploit. Hmm, why is that working? Uh, you will see Skype is running at the background. See, I always tell you, bad example. While, you, while you're presenting, you should not have all this running in the background. Because now someone can just go to Facebook and start to chat with me. <laughs> you know, say, Erdo, and annoy me during the class. Uh, look at this port number. Very, very interesting. One, two, three. To be honest, uh, this looks suspicious to me. I can do a voice analysis. Please look up I'm not valid on machine names. So it's a machine name. Probably it's one of my machine names, but it can go and I can check the internet as well. 
All right. Does this give you an idea? What's the next question? Uh, I'll grab you one more question. One moment. Uh, just also what I was asking, I need to evaluate the security risk of a web-based software application. Uh, uh, we are not sorry. covering today web-based software application, but the idea is the same. You can do it in two ways. One, you know everything. You just use the vulnerable scan against it or a meta exploit. If you remember last week, I did run it against my blog. I will, uh, I will look into it why it's not working. But more importantly, you can use some sort of different of different tools. There are application-based vulnerability scanners to scan this, so it's possible. I can. I uh, think we're gonna cover this. Uh, if not, to remind me, I can record a demo for you. Please, please put it in the forums. Uh, when I'm back in Australia, I'm more than happy to get you a demo for that. One more question, or should I just move? We'll go on for now. All right, all right. There is one important thing which you should know. Time has changed. Not when I was little, I used to play in the streets, but today I'm not sending my son, I'm talking about Australia, to the streets because it's not safe as it used to be. Hacking is not different. In year 2000 or year 1900, hacking was different concept than it what is today. People used to know their network infrastructure. They used to know their protocols, their users, their application, their data. They used to apply defense in that and done. But today, it's not like this. Today, they have to know the security roadmap. They have to define the users. They have to define the application that the user is going to use. And they might have to define what kind of data can that user produce, on which role, on which process. Based on that, they have to follow a security framework, usually it's based on ITO or ISO 20000. And they have to keep checking it. Last week we did talk about it. I said, plan, do, check, act, PDCA. I got a couple of information in my blog. So it's a process which is going to continue on. So today, secure networks are harder than yesterday. Why? You have to keep an eye on your personal. A good example is Ed Snowden, the guy who did collect terabytes information. And apparently now he works for Russian secret agency based on the news. I don't know how true it is. Uh, physical access. Look, if I can touch a computer, then I can hack that computer. You should have proper badges, maybe uniforms, or at least procedures. Communication methods. Don't be nice to strangers. Don't open the gate because they have some heavy stuff. They might have some tools to crack your network, and they try to sneak in. I told you that I used to be an ISO auditor. I mean, I still got to... Uh, the certificate. I'm still uh, officially an ISO editor. And when I was doing auditing, the first thing I used to check before the computer system was the physical security. You should also test if they are allowed, if they have some root access. If they do, that four, five double uh, W and one H question comes through. When, where, how. Why, since it's four only, by the way, I said five, and how? You should know these questions. I mean, more importantly, the answers. You should have proper security procedures. What happened? When it happened? Where it happened? How it happened? By who it happened? Usually the last question is the hardest question. And to be able to do that, you should have a proper incident response team. Your incident response team will be responsible in case of bad thing happen, what to do, how to do. Uh, could be a bad configuration where people have to go to the next level. So, you should have a DR procedure. At the security entry points, externally, 
I do recommend to physical security. A simple fence, a simple protected external access will help you to be more secure. I mean, here in Manila, I notice every building has a security guard. I notice most of the shops, they have a security guard. Which is, you know, it might look weird, but it's not. It's all about security, right? They give me the confidence that in that shopping center I'm secure because there are too many security guards, you know. Nobody's going to grab my wallet. Where in Australia, maybe uh, they do that with few security guards, but with cameras. And maybe someone will just grab my phone with a mask and start running. Uh, and good luck me finding that security guard. No, who has, who has access to what? So I know that James is going to be online every Wednesday till the starts finish 7 to 9 p.m. Why? That poor guy has to help me to answer all these questions. And he's one of our administrators at CSU as well, who takes care of our servers, you know, one of many. But uh, he is my first contact point if my email doesn't work. Even though uh, I'm responsible in a different company for that myself. If you have roaming data sources, such as cloud, as today everything is going to cloud, I would highly recommend you to take care of this cloud as well. What kind of information is going there? Or what protocol? Do you have force security? Do you have two force two-way authentication? A good example is eBay. You didn't done anything wrong. But eBay sends an email to change your password. Hey eBay, don't play a game with me. Tell me what happened to my data? Who knows my date of birth? Who knows my address? Who knows my credit card details? Why are you kidding me while saying change your password? Do you think the hacker just stole my password? Really? So they're trying to underestimate what happened. Nobody's asking the big picture. And the question is, why? I mean, I'm still using eBay. Uh, I still buy stuff from eBay sometimes. But I know that when I call next time the bank, I'm not the only one who knows my dad of birth besides Facebook. I'm not the only one who knows my address, besides Facebook. Uh, we will talk about this a little bit later. Uh, plan and implement technology solutions for maximum effect. So, if you call yourself a defense guy, you should start to think like a hacker. You should know how you can find harder discovery. Look, three minutes ago, I done it. I done a simple scan, okay, and I was honest with you, I didn't lie, but uh, to be honest, I did not continue with my, uh, I done the scan, but I did not click connect, I just ping them, finished, I can do that over the mistake, but you got this recording, you can use it against me, uh, find the entry points, and I did find some entry points, remember that HP stuff, I could just find any open ports, yeah, I could just find then a username. Don't forget, username, uh, email address is user's username. That will help me to go to other resources. Get a foothold. Hey, Ernal. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Can we just have one more shot at uh, fixing up the, the screen resolution? Possibly if you change your Windows screen resolution. Oh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, screen. yeah. Why I didn't think Perhaps about that? All, uh, just because we're missing the bottom of that slide. Uh, no, that's the highest <laughs> which I have. Should I go lower? Yeah, a lower one might do well. Um, yeah, just, just given what we see. Okay, is it better now? Hold on. The very bottom, but it's... It's is it better? What? Where do you... Closer. Ex where, can, what do you see last? We can see delete audit logs, edit DNS. Is there anything under that? No, there's nothing underneath there. All right, I, mean, I don't see anything enough. there as well. I don't know what you expect to see there. <laughs> There is nothing there. It ends after edit DNS. It's our, you know, red, uh, the red thing, uh, which is our IT masters CSU slide text template. There is nothing underneath. So edit DNS, underneath is blank. Nothing is there. Even I don't see anything there. Cool. Thanks, Adol. It's it's, it's, it's almost perfect. It's good enough. We'll go on so we can. Uh, Thank you. You're stressing me for nothing, learning. James. <laughs> I think you need one more dip of coffee. <laughs> Don't believe on this end users, they always blame me. Alright, 
So obtain username, then we can get the password. Why? We can use can enable, we can use opt crack. Use the uh, malicious list payload. Like I'm gonna show you a little bit later. I mean it didn't work, but I got a backup video. I can show you how I can use a payload to hack Windows 7 and patch Windows 7. Then I can steal information. Of course, I don't have permission to steal the information before you ask the questions. Then I should hide my tracks. Last week I gave an example, remember? Uh, hackers have five passes. Enumeration, information gathering, gaining access, maintaining access, clearing tracks. And if you look in the slide, this is exactly what I'm teaching you. I want you to think like a hacker. That's the only way to stop a hacker. Number two, defense skill. It's not just thinking like a hacker. You should also defend like a professional. So, you should know that fire your firewall is up to date. The signature patterns are current. If you have an IPS, your rules are detective. Your security policies are strong. You have multi-factor authentication. You plan remote access around security. You know what they can see, when they can see, how they can see. You train your staff on social engineering. I gave you a couple of tools, uh, websites, like videos to watch. If you watch the social engineering one, you will see that there is no patch for human stupidity. Uh, you should use, you should be able to use some third-party software uh, to keep system patched. Could be Microsoft MDSA, Microsoft Based on Security Analyzer, which is free, which is great. Uh, for Apple, uh, there must be something, I don't know, for Linux, I know you can use Splunk. And uh, you should have some uh, risk management in place. And of course, hiding the tracks. So, how do hackers gain access? Before I go to this, I want you, please, uh, if you have any questions, ask James. James, a few questions? Yep. Uh, Alexander just asked a question, which we're just talking about now. Do hackers just delete their tracks, which would seem suspicious, or do they edit their tracks? Uh, if they can edit it, probably edit is better because, um, you know, deleting, as you said, will be very suspicious. Like, if you see your computer logs, there is nothing, let's say, between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., where uh, you notice that something happened 2.45 a.m., then this is suspicious, as you said. Uh, some of them, they choose, you know, it's, it just depends. Like, if they're there with a zero day, they don't even leave their footprint there. So it depends on what kind of attack they launch. Like, remember my next question? If they're not using a firewall, it's impossible for them to know what I've done. But if they have a firewall, or uh, if they check their logs, which most of you don't, probably you're not going to know. It's like when you drive a car. If you don't check the lights, how can you know that you're running out of petrol until the car stops? Next question, please. A follow-up to that question has come in. How, how can you, as a system administrator, um, detect someone who's, who's gone and... Use firewall, use IPS, use IDS. Check your logs. It's just three steps, which we'll, we're going to talk towards end of the slide with some more extra stuff, okay? That's just to answer the question now, but the details are coming after this demonstration. Any other questions? Uh, one last one here. Um, if any port that is used by applications like Oracle DB, where the port is pre-reserved, would that be able to be hacked? It could be, but it's your job to monitor this port. You know what Oracle uh, data frame is based on your security uh, baseline. So you should have some sort of security baseline where you can always compare if something is uh, with huge difference, that means be aware. Something is going on. 
All right, I'm Yvonne, unless you want to ask one more. All right, stop cyber crime. I'll just put a retweet here. Okay, stop cyber crime. Don't forget if you're using social media, okay? All right, here's my demonstration. I got Windows 8 PC here, which I'm logging in. I'm going to launch a tool now. I'm going to my tool folder. I'm going to my Trojans. And I'm going to install a, you know, I want to show you how ProRot works. So I'm just running it. Of course, uh, the hacker is not going to just double click on it, OK? So it's going to, as I done it last week, they're going to bind it with another software. And you're going to download this way. But this is the hacker console. As you can see, uh, first you have to go create a virus. Uh, uh, I will go create a virus. If I know the IP address, I will add the IP address. If not, as you can see, it is giving me the server port, the server password. I can just select, like, kill antivirus, disable Windows XP, do this. I know it's an old tool, but it's still effective if you don't have the proper protection. I just leave the visibility on, so you will see what I'm going to do. I'm going to bind it with a file. I'm going to select a file. In this case, I'm going to read, for example, readme.txt. So I'm getting a text file, and I'm binding my virus to that text file. So why? Because most of the time, when you download a crack, uh, you will get the serial key in a text file. You go and open it. And I'm going to create an icon. As you can see, I'm just clicking, creating server. I'm selecting a beautiful icon. Um, which one should I select? Um, I love the heart. Yeah, I'm going to select the hard one. No, no. This one? No, I got the heart. Yeah. Create server. Shortly, you're going to see that I'm creating a virus, which is 250 bytes, which is my server which is binded to my text document. All right, if I minimize now, and F5, here we go. Uh, the icon will change shortly. Binded server.exe has been created. Now I'm going to set up my R2 up-to-date system. I'm logging in. Remember last week, we did create a virus, and that virus was binded to a Tetris game. If you didn't watch it, please go ahead and watch it. So to save time, I'm not doing this, this tweet. So I'm just minimizing. I'm going to my computer, to my share. So I'm just going double clicking to my virus which I created. But in reality, nobody's going to do that. They're going to bind it with the game. And here's my binded server. Remember, I put it as hard. Double click on it. So you do install that free game, that crack application. And here you go. It is just opening a text document. No, T no EXE. The last week someone asked me the question and I said, promise I'm going to do a demonstration. And this is the demonstration for last week's question. Remember? They said how you can add an EXE into text file or into audio. Here's the answer. So, now I'm going back to my ProRat server. Uh, the IP address, I know it. You know, when they download, they leave, leave a foot rack. In this case, I know the IP address. I click connect. Oh, my password. My ultra secure password. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> now, I'm connected. You don't believe me? Look what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get some PC information. Let me try to make the screen bigger. Come on screen. Anyway, uh, you see the computer name. You see I can send some messages. I can chat with them. <laughs> I'm a hacker, you victim. I can hide the desktop icons, open the CD-ROM. <laughs> That's kid stuff. Shut down the PC. Why? Give damage. Why? Download and run any application you like. You can just edit whatever you like. You can 
see the processes, you can kill processes such as the antivirus. I can show the Windows processes. If there's an FTP, I can just upload <laughs> some stuff to the server. And that's what hackers do these days. They use free hosting from uh, web servers. And as you can see, ProRut is creating a download directory, which is very dumb to use it, because a smart hacker will detect it straight away. I can even go and get a keylogger. Look, read log, there is nothing. So I'm going to just uh, create a read log, nothing. I'm going to my Windows 8 PC again. Now I'm going to open an ultra super duper secret document and I'm going to put it, let's say, in a notepad. And I'm going to call this I love, uh, you know, packet or I love CSU. Thank you for joining. Don't worry about spell mistakes. Let me make it bigger. By the way, I did done this demo at TechEd. I had 1,200 people sitting there. Uh, thank you for joining our session. We love you. Or whatever. Now, read log. Boom. Not loud tech. Thank you for joining our session. I can just clear the screen. Uh, I can read it again. So, it is keeping a track. We can call it DR. Isn't that what the NSA doing these days? NSA, if you don't know what it is, don't worry. So I think you got the idea. An old tool, the version 1.9, it's still working today. And this is just to give you an idea. So it could be any other product, any other virus. And yes, look, please don't ask me the question. I did just go ahead and put the IP address. But last week, I showed you how I can do a game and I can combine it together. I think you understand what I'm trying to say, right? It is about protecting yourself. It is about knowing how your enemy works. Some people did tweet about it last week. Know your enemy. If you know your enemy, you can stop your enemy. And it's all about stopping that enemy. All right. Somebody asked me, which I was hoping they're gonna ask me. Um, uh, did you have permission to scan your hotel network? Now look, I hate to say it, the answer was no. But please be smart and do not. I repeat it. Do not or don't yet nine higher. Uh, C, no, C is yet. You know, don't scan this IP addresses. Unless you want to be in trouble. Unless you want to be in trouble. Don't scan this IP addresses unless you want to be in trouble. I hope you get the message. So, what tools can you use? So, many people were asking the tools. I've done an easy job. I just put them all for you here. Please go ahead and read them later. Uh, we got only one hour time left. I'm not going to spend too much time with this, okay? Uh, more tools for you where you can use. Most of them are free. And please use them at your own risk. If you get infected, don't blame me. Please watch my video. Some of you did, I know. Uh, watch how you can uh, create a lab and do this in your lab environment. And don't do what I do. Do what I say. Do not scan networks. Because if there is an IPS, they will come and knock your door straight away. If they're smart. So, what can you do to protect? I think one of the questions, James, you told me, uh, how can people protect against it? And I said, use firewall. Use IDS. Use some IDS rules. Hide your sensitive information. We did talk about it last week as well. If it's something sensitive, what the hell is this doing on Facebook? Or why it's in a DMZ area which is open to public network? Don't. Please ensure you have proper routing and filtering. Your router is up to date.
please ask this question. When did you update last time your router's firmware? Please be very honest. When? At home. When? How do you know that somebody is not already in your router? How can you tell? How can I tell? But I got a firewall and they sniff your router. Your firewall will protect you between the router and your computer as soon as it leaves the network unless you got a VPN somewhere else it's connected. What's going to happen then? Unless you're using HTTPS. What's going to happen then? People can... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you hit me. Next year. So, please. Update your router. Your IDS. Your firewall. Look, I do want to mention. One of my department clients in Australia was hacked. You know why? The firewall administrator has resigned. They didn't want to hire someone else. The IT pro still had no clue about that firewall. It was complex. They did not update the firmware and some of find out the hardware that they're using. They use the vulnerability of that hardware and they hacked them. Then they called me, Erdl, please help. And what can I do? What can I do? Seriously. All what I can do is try to trace them back. Good luck to me. So, you should use some custom rule set to lock down the network. You should block unwanted ports straight into firewall. If you don't need it, close it down. ICMP packages, do you really need it? Do you really need it? No? Close it down. TCP UDP scanning. You know what is coming inside the network? It's like your food. Why you don't eat anything and everything? Like I know, for example, Muslims, they don't eat pork. Uh, some sort of Indians, they don't eat meat. Uh, or Jewish, they don't, uh, they're, not to drink, they're, they're not supposed to drink alcohol. You know? If you put yourself into this religion, or Christians, you know, just an example, you know, you are not allowed to kill, then you should follow it. If you call yourself Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, you should follow the rules. And the rules are open, open the book, it's there. It's not different than security. There, you got rules to follow. Please follow the rules. And have some sort of IPS, IPS firewall, free. Download it, like Zonalam, like Sophos, like Microsoft Firewall. It's free, just use it, please. I'm not saying they're the best. I'm saying something is better than nothing. What else? What is banner grabbing? Banner grabbing is an enumeration technique used to Gain, don't worry about my spell mistake, I'm sorry for that. Information about computer system on a network and the service is running its open port. Last week I used Martigo. Last week I used, uh, sorry, I used um, Firewall, uh, not Firewall, Firefox. At Firefox I used Server Spy. I saw even people what kinds of server they're using. They were openly publishing, hey, I'm using, it's in my blog as well. Erdl is using Linux Apache 2.4. Really? Thank you. Oh, I'm using IES 6.0. Ah, oh, thank you for publishing. It's really not hard. Use ID server to block it. Use some tools to block it. Why are you opening it? Yeah. You don't believe me? You know what they can do? Uh, here's ID server. Uh, let's go. Mr. Erdaluska, carry the server. Hey, that's IP address. That's the port. That's the server I'm using. Clear text. Uh, I accept encoding. It's PHP. The version is exactly 5.3.2.6. I can see the cookies. Hey, Mr. Sky, are you using Joomla? But you just told me a few minutes ago, don't do that. Even you are not doing it. Remember? Do what I say. Don't do what I do. 
if I block this, what I'm going to show in this graph? Yes, yeah, someone is going to probably hack me. Who cares? I got back up. I will, I will be back up in one, two hours or one day. But it's better than going to act like it's better going to see a few website saying, "Oh, we're using this," and tomorrow someone hacks, I'm in trouble. At least I will put only myself in trouble. Do you understand why I'm doing it? So there's a reason behind this. I do so many demonstrations worldwide. I mean, um, for the one stay connected ENSA class. Since then, I did, did show the world twice doing presentation. So can you imagine? Not everybody's a good guy. I'm pretty sure. Some of you in this class, you have some bad intentions against your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your mom, dad. So I can't stop that. But I can show you what the others do. So at least not only the good knows, but also the bad knows as well what's going on. All right? A free tool I do serve. You can download it. It's very old, 2003 version, by the way. It's 11 years old, still doing the job. Uh, should I take another question? Sure. Uh, not, not quite on topic, but I think it's one that's on everyone's minds a bit at the moment. Uh, Alexander is asking, um, how can we identify hardware and software that is free of NSA backdoors? <laughs> Either through practice that's a very or hot topic. tools very, or very hot topic. Of information on that. Very hot topic, to be honest. Uh, NSA is uh, look, uh, even Angry Birds. I think we did talk about it last week. Has some sort of information we sent back to NSA. If not, come on. Uh, can you please ask if she's he or she's using? Uh, you said Alexa, right? Is using Google? You know that they were watching Google. Um, Microsoft won a court case against FBI. They said we are not going to share anything with you. Sorry, go away. And FBI lost a court case. So, but Google, they, they didn't. I'm not saying Google done it by intention. Uh, you know, I don't want Google to knock my door tomorrow. Uh, but, or Apple. You know, uh, funny enough, uh, you know that uh, Apple has a very strict policy in their App Store. Did you know that Google was, Google was bypassing this with a secret call? and was collecting information from Apple phones as well, where Apple finds it out. Actually, F-Secure finds it out. F-Secure is a company. F-Secure, and they published it, and then Apple has, uh, you know, Google has to change the policy. You know, the policy. So it's normal. People do it. So, but, uh, I hope this answered the question. So, to be honest, I don't know what NSA is doing, how they're doing it. All what I know is what you read. Uh, nothing different. So you're going to say, what I mean, all what I can suggest, you know, uh, if you don't know the third party, don't use it. Might be, yeah, it's harmless software such as. Look, many people. I mean, last week some people did tag me in the NSA. I don't know if you know NSA was collecting pictures from the internet. Can I be honest? I don't give a freak about NSA. What they can collect me? I know I'm not doing anything bad. So if you have nothing to worry, what let them collect. Let them watch you. It's like, you know, when you go to, like, every time I go to airport, they scan you, and I'm usually the random guy which they ask questions. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to lose 30 seconds, one minute. I know I didn't do anything bad, so I have nothing to worry. They ask me all these boring questions. Did you touch explosive items? Even if I did, am I going to say yes? But they ask, I say no. They let me go. Uh, you know, they ask, you have the form, you feel like I travel so much. Every time I go to a country, I fill the forms. I mean, I am honest. I have nothing to hide. So let them watch you. Unless you're doing something bad. Then it's good, you know. If you're doing something bad, they will see you and hopefully catch you. So do you, do you understand the point as well? I'm not saying what they're doing is good. It's my privacy. They should not mix their nose into my privacy. But they do. Stop them if you can. I can't. Sorry. I'm too little for that. I hope you are happy with the answer. Thanks, Adel. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one more question for now. That's okay. right. Um, is application control still a good measure for security on a user's PC? Definitely, yes. 
if you know what application is used, uh, you know what kinds of vulnerability you have, uh, then the answer is yes. Um, Paul said, I think I just opened the question. Can you see when I open the questions on my screen or not? Oh, do you see the slide or the questions? At the moment, I just opened the questions as well. Uh, it's not showing up properly for me. Beautiful. Uh, so, Paul asked a very good question. Uh, actually, not a question, statement. NSA are just another group of hackers, <laughs> better funded and better resourced. But just another bunch of hackers. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, I can't disagree. If they look, I'm flying very soon to US. If they, if they uh, arrest me, please don't forget to send me some postcards, Paul. I'm not telling your last name. <laughs> okay, back to the question, uh, the, the 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 topic. If you don't have any questions, questions? Or no, yeah, yeah, go on at all. Alright. Um I will go on right now. So banner grabbing again. Uh, basically hacker will try to see what kinds of host what kinds of network you're running. And the idea is to find out what you're doing. So you can use Backtrack or Kali. You can use uh, I mean um, some other tools. <laughs> Telnet is not recommended, but you can if you really want to. Where you can, um, like this is so identified as IS6. Last week I showed you that's a netcraft. Remember, I had it in my tool toolbar, uh, my Firefox. Uh, you can use basically Firefox, Kali Linux to do that. Um, what is vulnerability scanning? We did talk about it. Now, proper definition. Vulnerability scanning identifies vulnerabilities and weaknesses of a system and network in order to determine how a system can be exploited. They can use an application, and the question a few minutes ago said, is it a good idea to have application control? Definitely yes. Because if you know what application is used, if you know what kind of data the application is processing, then you can protect it. The network, network topology, open ports, running services, applications, services configuration is always good to know. And here is a bunch of tools. My favorite, MBSA. Compact is too expensive. Forget it. Next port, uh, you have the free version. The Metasploit, you got the free version. Uh, MBSA is beautiful. Some more tools here. No, no tools. Yeah, some more tools here. So what can you do? As a penetration tester, you should pause all unused ports. You should disable all unnecessary services. You should hide all your banners. You should troubleshoot all your errors and do not, I repeat, do not publish them on the internet. I saw so many forum posts. Hi, I'm using uh, server 2008. This is my IP address. I every time I do this, I get that. Thank you very much. I got your IP address. I got your error. All what I have to do is work on this error to bring you down. So don't share too much information in public forums. Don't. I can show you tons of examples which lead it to get hacked. So you can use to perform discovery, you can use Angry IP scanner and map. To perform a port scanning, you, you can use net scan tools. To perform banner grabbing, you can use uh, Netcraft, which is free, and you can download the toolbar. I showed the last week how to do that. To Scan vulnerability, you can use Saint, it's a Linux based, or you can use Kali Linux, or Nessus, it's free, highly recommended, Nessus, Nessus.org. GFI Langard, highly recommended. Uh, for network diagrams, you can use some tools such as LAN Survivor. For proxy servers, you can use Hide My Ads, Proxifier, and uh, I, I think every Windows has 
already a tool. So you can just open Network and Sharing Center. You can click in the connections that you have. Uh, no. Disabled. Let me just show you. Here we go. Someone already started to chat with me. Uh, which I forgot to close. What I was doing. Let me connect to my Windows 7 PC. I lost it. My Windows 7 PC. I go to my attack PC. Start. So I'm going to come back to this demo. Give it a few time to start. Alright. Now what have we learned? We learned the hacking methodology. We learned what footprinting is. We did talk about scanning. Soon we're going to talk about enumeration. And for all this, we use Whois. And at Lookup, you can use GFI LAN, NMAP, RPC Info, TCP Dump, John the Ripper, you know, some different tools. So, to stop cyber crimes, you should understand what they are using. Stop cyber crimes. So, any questions about this module? Any question about the module? James? I can take a few questions. Uh, I've just got a few questions here. Um, not what sure are some of the measures we can... Out of the module, but I'll, I'll put them up to you. Yeah, I think I, I, I can see them now. Uh, do you want me to read or you want to select because you see them all? Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm listening. Oh, that's, a, that's a good one anyway. I don't know if it's too on topic, but um, what are some of the measures you can use to prevent, prevent a disgruntled employee or ex-employee from attacking your network? Uh, IPS. They've, they've got the keys. IPS. Yep. Uh, then, um, like, NSA. They were attacking the world. They couldn't stop a contractor. Uh, it's hard to distinguish employee, especially like if you are the network administrator and you have bad intentions. The best thing which you can do is se uh, separation of duties, uh, least privileges. But if you are the admin, it's hard to give least privileges, right? But separation of duties, having proper auditing, and I mean human factor. Uh, if you're working in a bank. I mean, it happens so many times. Or politicians, they become prime ministers, but they still take some, you know, th there's many examples in the world where uh, they get, they can easily get distinguished. It's really hard. Uh, as the human is involved, all what you can do is, uh, we're going to talk about it, I think, have proper security, but the best recommendation which I can do is, is, um, limit the access or proper auditing. Disable accounts is right. Uh, reset accounts. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, uh, Sabri said something really good uh, where you answered as well. You know how eBay was hacked, right? Why are employees, they are not using their accounts anymore. They were fired or resigned. They get access to those. So eBay, you assume they're secure, they were not. Uh, some Daryl, I love you, Daryl. By the way, Daryl, please be in touch with um, with us as a thank you. You're getting your gift, isn't it, uh, James? Plus, this is a message for all of you. This applies to everybody. Please go ahead and uh, help us to fill up the answer forms, the answer the forms, and you will get also some PPs as well. Soft token authentication, yes, Jason. Not yes, you know there are many different stuff. Uh, thank you, Daryl. But I know you're happy, but we are happy to give you some stuff as well, as a small thank you. Enumeration. So we did talk about recall. Now it's to talk about enumeration. So what is enumeration? Here's a proper, proper what? Definition. 
let's read it together. Enumeration is the first step to external penetration testing. Thank you, Odo. This was really informative. Uh, what else do you think it's important here, Odo? Can you please tell us? Yeah, of course. The step is performed largely over the internet using readily available software and publicly accessible responses of information. Such as last week I showed you seekit.com where you can find jobs. What was what was the case? Uh, you could just get some information out there. Use in groups. Use Nmap, which is the network mapper to scan host in your network. You can use Nmap to see if there's any firewall. You can use Xprop2, Xprop2 to discover operating system version. You can use Netcat to discover the power of, uh, you know, Netcat is such as um, Swiss Army Knife. And you can just use many tools in Netcat. Uh, if you remember my uh, slide deck three minutes ago here, this is Netcat. And see, you can just create chat session, you can do port scanning, you can do banner grabbing, you can do port forwarding, you can do file transfer, and many other stuff. Um, if I get like the time, I might do some Netcat demo for you, which is really great. And you can do it all via Kali Linux for free. So, what else? Most of the information we obtain is usually the step which we can take on freely available information. So nobody can, nobody can sue me. Like, scan the network, you can sue me. But using who is, nobody can sue me. Last week I used network-tools.com. I scanned, I gained some information. Who can sue me there for that? It's publicly available. Don't let me do that. Uh, again, uh, there are some other tools which you can use, such as, first of all, you're going to find some URLs. You're going to look at, don't worry about the spell mistake, I just noticed it. Please don't make any comments. Sometimes you just don't see them, I just saw it now. Locate every single detail. Gain as much as information about the network, do who is lookup, find an IP block, look at the ISP, find the open port, use some sort of sync scan to see the target response, and you know you're gonna use different scanning tools, you're gonna try to locate error messages, you're gonna try to find OS vulnerabilities, some RDP sessions, maybe you're gonna sniff root first session, and you're gonna try again and again, and then again, uh, until you find what you are after. All right, here's a couple of useful information for you. Straight from Microsoft, enumerate network resources. Uh, please download the PDF right after the session. You can click into this. Microsoft has uh, some really good information on this. Then another good uh, URL for you, security through penetration testing. Internet penetration, you can go to inframit.com, articles, article number, this, and you can have some cool information for my book as well, which is really good, I want to share with you. And if you want to use some tools, remember I was using a few minutes ago, this internal tools, and whatever you see in this skill, uh, you know, it's uh, technet.microsoft.com or sysinternals, dash sysinternals. It's 16 megabytes from Microsoft, highly recommended. You can use psexec, psfile, you can use pskill, psinfo, pshutdown. So please look into this as we don't have much time. I'm not going to be able to do much on it. How you can use enumerate system using default password? You saw me in the first session. I went to defaultpassword.com. What else? I, there is another website which I just remember to tell you. Uh, this should work now. Pectionary. Everybody knows dictionary? Pectionary.com. Pectionary.com. It's like dictionary, but it's hack. Pectionary. It's the world's biggest flash database. Pectionary. You can just go, like, I'm talking about Sinscape. Let me just shut this person down. 
uh, Mohammed, I think you're on the session, right? Ah, sorry. Uh, he's not able to join today. So, time out. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, that's why I say please don't use, uh, you know, my Facebook to chat. Use the phone. That's the reason because. God knows what I'm doing and I have to close my Skype this and that, which I should usually. Things can. Go to S, just an example. Uh, you can just scroll down. Or sing flooding. What is it? I don't know too. And it's gonna load up. It's not just giving you information. It is also demonstrating it for you. Hey, people use DOS, DDoS, hack comes from the term hack, you know, they explain you, you can just play the video. Uh, probably your internet is faster than mine here. Go, you can, you know, open many different, uh, you know, hack uh, I don't know if you see the animation. It creates some animations, it shows you how it works, uh, it shows you step by step. I'm a man in Canada, it's not the fastest here, I'm not gonna force my luck. Tactionary.com. Tactionary.com. And don't worry, they didn't pay me. Ah, I told you it's gonna work. Uh, yeah, it's probably an update. It's fixing itself. I'm just gonna leave it running. I knew there was something. Any question about this? If not, a bonus module. I knew we were going to finish earlier today. So instead of letting you go, I know James is begging for that probably now. Uh, but I don't know if you notice this here. Hacker inside. <laughs> it's the Intel logo with, uh, you know, Intel inside. Change the hacker inside. System hacking. <laughs> hacker detected. Uh, before I go, uh, do we got any questions in the previous session? Yep. Um, a question here. By using some of these hacker tools, are you opening yourselves to be hacked with the information that you type into them? Question. Good question. If you are not the master, you are controlled by the master. I don't know if you get the answer. So the answer is, if you're using untrusted tools, yes. What is untrusted tools? The tools that nobody knows. The tools that you download from underground websites. But don't forget. I guess the question then is how, how, how can you ever know that you truly trust a tool? Uh, good question again. Look, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say I'm a uh, heart surgeon. Okay? Who is the person who's asking the question? Name? Uh, sorry, I've, I've missed that. All right, don't worry then. Uh, let's say George, okay? George, uh, me and George, we're going to a holiday, and George is getting a heart attack. I'm a heart surgeon. What can I do if I don't have my tools? I mean, I can do heart massage. I can help him, but how much can I help him? It's not too much, right? Because I need my tools. So a good security administrator IT professional needs the tools as well. You can just uh, close your eyes and feel, oh, I feel the attack comes on the right side of the network. No. So, in this case, we need our tools. We have some trustable tools, um, which, uh, would, I mean, you, you can easily find out if something is trustable or not. Uh, it's hard to answer a question, seriously. I mean, like, I'm talking about Metasploit. It's a multi-million dollar project. Do you think they're going to... If you, if you do, don't use them. It's like a bit of goodwill as well. But uh, here's a beautiful example. What I had, even last week, people asked me, Linux is more secure. Really? Did you, don't know, did you know that Linux, just yesterday, there was a big bug found that uh, every encryption due with Linux can be easily decrypted? via a single bug, bug which was detected yesterday. The bug is 
all but Bajat Bajat is yet to So there is not the most to cure. One more question, please. James? Sorry, I was busy replying to things. What do we got oh, here? Sorry. One more question. <laughs> Oh, you've gone and answered half of these as part of it. Uh, um, oh, sorry, off topic, but if you find an, but you know, a good entry point would be good. If you find a hacker has gained access, uh, you know, from a specific IP in your log, what do you do next? Sorry. So I guess if you find that you've been hacked, or you sus suspect that you've been hacked, the first thing is you plug the network cable up. Plug, yeah. plug the network cable out. Connect. Disconnect from the internet. Alright? Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, why? Because at least now you know he's, he or she is outside. Uh, then, try to, you know, uh, now you're going to say, how are you going to track back? If it's a DOS attack. Uh, if you have the right tools, maybe you can track it back, but what is your priority? To stop the attack or to catch the attack? Uh, if you plug it out, you will probably lose the connection. Uh, but if you go to Honeypot, for example, you can just let them browse more and more where you can browse their network. So, uh, that's the best thing which I suggest. Any other questions? Uh, mostly a, a lot of comments at the moment. I think uh, Good or bad the one. chat log's got, a, got away. I've, I've just been trying to reply to all of them so everyone can see all the comments. Uh, good one. I mean, any comments? So if we got if any anyone's got a question they want to ask right now, put it up. Uh, let me I'll see it. Questions again? Attendees? I keep forgetting this question we have here. Ah, questions. There are multiple attack methods for the network, yes. OSP, yes, yeah. For the yes, I mean, yeah. Comments, okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, uh, just quickly, guys, so if, if had a big uh, conversation here. I won't um, keep re-replying it here so Erdogan can go on with the presentation, but if we want to keep talking about uh, all of this to, to do with Tor and, and uh, Trojans and, and a bunch of conversations going on, if you want to post to the discussion forum after this, Please. It's a good place to do a proper discussion about this. Which I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, recording. Please, guys, that's the easiest way for us to be able to be in touch. If you do it here, you know, we have limited resources. Uh, today, uh, to be honest, we didn't do much marketing for this week's class. I didn't see much. Even myself, I was too busy. But we still have a uh, few hundred people in. But uh, there, we have more than, of course, I think we've reached the 10,000 limits already. Uh, in terms of uh, attendee numbers and from what I can see people are watching the recordings which is great so it's impossible for us to deal with 10,000 people one by one but if you use the forums we have great people Daryl was an example but I'm pretty sure there are some other good guys which I don't remember the names now uh, you can be the next one uh, you know let's let's help each other and make this course more available because look they ask, I mean, they call me, you know, most of the time, security expert, ethical hacker. I got lots of awards in this, but I'm going to be very honest. I don't classify myself as knowing everything. I know my knowledge together with your knowledge will be better. So I have, I have lots of stuff to learn from you as well, because I'm one person. I have experience based on my life, what I saw. Maybe you work in a different network type, which I couldn't see yet. And if you share this information with us, then we can go to the next level. And that's why it's important to read forms, to read newsletters, to see what's going on in the real life as well. I mean, besides your network. Like, I'm very Microsoft focused, very Linux focused. But what about Apple? To be honest, I gain the information from, uh, from the Internet. Look, I'm a penetration tester. For years, I was charging lots of money for doing penetration testing. But if you think I do everything by myself, it's impossible. I, you, you should have a good team which you work with together to go to the next level. 
anyway the time is um, I think we got only half an hour left so we have still how many slides and 20 slides here yeah. let me finish the slides what have we learned so far we learned food printing how you can collect IP range namespace how you can use the internet and I asked you last week to watch my demo Google hacking go watch it it's in our YouTube channel IT masters PSE YouTube channel we talked about scanning module, target assessment, identification of services, identification of system. Then I showed you how you can enumerate modules, which was institution profile, user list, security flows. And I think we had Hydra right here. Uh, not this one. Uh, you know, you saw what I can do with this little tool here. With that little tool here, here we go. It scan the network. You will see uh, turned on host, slow down host. You know, uh, you know there. I'm not gonna. As I said, we don't have the permission to do scan it, so we better don't scan it now. But uh, you see how easy it is. So the system hacking goals are, as we talked last week, it is basically gaining access, stealing your identity, your money, your information, your data, your, 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 I mean, I can make the list longer, longer and longer. Uh, the important thing here is to understand that hackers use password cracking techniques. They use these techniques to gain unauthorized access. Sometimes they get your password. Um, how hard is to get a password? Look, I'm not going to do it in a public network, but if you were in front of me, sitting in my class, and signed the uh, uh, non-disclosure agreement, I can show you within three minutes how you can find live RDP client and how you can get gain access within less than three minutes, depends on the password. Okay, I done it in my classes before life, but all the students had to sign an agreement. They are not going to use the knowledge for bad stuff. I mean, these people were. I had students from Microsoft, from Japan, from Australian Federal Police, uh, or from other governments as well. You know, from government sectors. So I can't do it on the network here because it's highly classified, and this can put me in deep trouble. So is this the only way? No. Do some channel. Yeah, do a YouTube scan. You will see. Uh, many videos on this so but I can't do that because it will put me it will, it will put my career on risk so I will be tomorrow in the news saying a sky showed uh, hacking tools which cause any that company to get hacked I don't want this to happen but what I'm trying to tell you is if you go to authorized training partner and sign an agreement they will show you depends on the trainer some cool stuff as well uh, so if you don't want to get hacked again, you should understand the password cracking techniques. So, we have dictionary attack. What is a dictionary attack? A dictionary attack happens with collection some words, which we call a dictionary file, which we load into the cracking application and try to get user's password. Then, we have something called Bruce Force Attacks. The program tries a recombination of characters to crack your password. Then we got Hybrid Attack, which is a bit of dictionary and Bruce Force Attack. Uh, it adds some numbers, symbols from the words of the dictionary, and it will try to crack the password. Then we have Syllable Attack, which is again combination of brute force and dictionary attack. Then rubric, which gathers some information about the password based on the attack when the attacker gets some information. Here is the OpTrack demo for you. Uh, the website for you to download OpTrack is opcrack.sourceforge.net. Uh, let me just quickly connect and I want to show you the importance of firewalls. Uh, not firewalls, uh, passwords. You know, you can just download it from here. And the tables, 
are here. Look, we keep saying, please, 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 please use the code password. Some of you do never listen to us. Microsoft is highly recommending you to leave Windows XP and move to Windows 7, if not Windows 8. How many of you done that? Not too many. Are you still say, oh, I love my XP. Today, I, I'm not going to mention a uh, name. While I was walking in the Philippines here, I saw banks still using Windows XP. Well, look, forget about everything else. If you're using Windows XP and you use not a special character, the dictionary file, the rainbow table file is going to be 380 megabytes. You cracked your password. Uh, if you, you know, and it's, if you're using a special character, it's going to be 7.5 gigabytes. Uh, I'm going to move down to Windows 8. If you're using a password with special characters, and only up to 8 characters, the password, the dictionary file is 2 terabytes. 2 terabytes. And... What is if you go use a nine character? Sorry, uncrackable. So, what I'm going to say is, please use secure password. Uh, let this scan. Uh, my, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to run a quick video. Uh, not this. All right. Now I'm going to use my 2012 PC. I'm just logging in. I'm going to use a tool. As you can see, it's 2012. I'm going to close my server manager. I close it down. I open my tools. And this tool is talking about you know, system hacking. I go password tracking tools. I'm going to start with uh, OpCrack. No, not this one at all. Oh, no, let's start with LCP. You can download it for free as well. LCP, just next, install it, finish. Press the button, launch LCP. Type LCP, run. And here we go. It can run a dictionary attack, a Bruce first attack. You can just uh, get session from the local computer, from a remote computer. In this case, I'm going for local computer. Just to make the uh, example fast, I selected easy password. I'm trying to make the screen a little bit bigger. Give me one second. Here we go. Now, do you see the password? No, you just see the NT hashes but no password. So all what I have to do is press crack button and it will do a dictionary attack. I don't know if you noticed, the passwords are coming here. And yes, look, please don't judge me. It's an easy password, but you don't want me to sit here and have a 24 character password and take five hours to crack the password. Do it yourself. Um, my idea, the idea of this demo is to show you how we can do it. Okay, next. Now I'm going to use another tool. PWDump7. It's a free software. Just launch it here. Right click. It's very hard to use. All what you have to do is type pwdump.exe. 7.exe. It will launch it up. And here you got the hashes. Now I got access to the hashes. So what I'm going to do with these hashes? First I'm going to dump it to a text file. So pwdump7.exe export the C drive C colon uh, I'm going to call it hashes or you know you can call it whatever like. and in this case I'm calling it tech at hashes .exe. Now if I go to C drive it has been exported ready to go. Hashes, tech at hashes, double click on it, open with notepad. 
and these are my hashes. Now, how can I crack this? I can open another program called GeoCracker. God knows what I'm going to use now. Uh, let me go. System hacking. Mm, password hacking. Password cracking. What should I use? I'm going to use the Come on, Uru. Rainbow crack. It's a GUI. Double crack. I can just go click and file. Add hash. I can add a single hash. Back to my text file. Collect that uh, hash. Make sure you don't get the semicolons. Only the number. Paste. Uh, let's have a command. What is the password? Single hash. Crack. Click OK. Alright. Or you can just go uh, do multiple hash. How can you collect these hashes? You can use a software called WinRTGen from K uh, Oxid IT. Last week we did talk about it. I can just load the whole file as you can see. Now rainbow table. You can go and add tables if you want to. In this case, uh, last week I showed you how you can download WinRTGen. Uh, WinRTGen as you saw, it's there, WinRTGen. Uh, it's a preloaded thing and look at the password. It's just test, it's cracked it. And I can just go on up on the whole uh, file as well, but I'm not going to do that in this case. Let's do some opcrack demo as well. You can use opcrack via Kali Linux uh, from here. Or to be, you know, to minimize my error rate. A beautiful software called Camastasia. Up crack. That's how up crack Hi. works. Welcome to this demonstration. All right, let me just meet myself. So you will have this video uploaded already. If not, James is going to upload it. So. That's off crack. You know, I'm just going through the explanation of the files which I did with you. I'm downloading off crack. I'm installing off crack. Uh, we can skip this as well. Now I got off crack installed. You can install the tables. You can download the two terabyte table if you really wish. You can use the hashes from the previous session, but now I'm going to off crack. Uh, just type it right. Off crack is right there. Double click on it. It's very hard to use. <laughs> Just uh, load the table, press crack, and that's it. So let's go load the table. I can dump single hash, PW dump, encrypted SAM. Even if it's encrypted, you can get it. So you can get a uh, SAM dump 2, SAM PW dump 6, remote SAM, but in this case, let's go to you know, you can do uh, different hash attacks, you can put your preferences in based on the table, based on the... Please watch the video later. So load PW dump file. Remember, I had the PW dump few seconds ago. Just select the dump, which is in my C drive. Uh, yeah, different recording. Hash crack, hash, hash is the crack.txt, it's the same file. Yeah, just select something a little. And it's very hard. All what you have to do is press that button. Ah, oh, come on, Uru. Uh, so this is the hashes. As you can see, no passwords. What I'm going to do right now is go tables. If you want, you can add the tables, which you can download from the website. All what you have to do is right click click enable you can watch this video later but what i'm going to do is uh, you know you select the file and install it i'm going to press crack button here it's downloading the file it's taking some time so and it, as soon as you press the crack button it will go and crack the passwords for you so that's so easy so when i say all right, let's do a live session.
please be honest. Who is losing a password less than eight characters? Don't put your name, otherwise uh, I'm going to call you bad. So you should not, and that's the reason why not, okay? So please go and watch this video later. It was just to give you an idea. Uh, this is still fixing it. I don't know what happened. So I hope you understand it. Any questions? There are some more tools, by the way. James? Wake up. Yeah. Questions? <laughs> Um, Chris had asked about um, what about organizations that use something like smart card authentication. Uh, I think that was in they are much more along the lines of what you're talking about now. They are much more secure. Um, can they still be cracked remotely? Uh, not really, unless you have access to that card. And don't forget, each card has its own TLS ELP uh, encryption, which is really hard to crack. But nothing is impossible. RSA was hacked. Uh, I don't know anything which happened yet, but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen in the near future. It's more secure. Remember, first thing, all that we can do is make the job harder, and that's what we're doing. Making the job harder. And cards are don't, most of don't be the low hanging most fruit. method at the moment. One of the most secure. Any other questions? Uh, I think you might have mentioned honeypots earlier. Uh, Adams asked, do you, do you suggest any offensive countermeasures such as honeypots? And would you put them yeah, in your DMZ? You honeypotproject.com. Uh, honeypotproject.com. It's uh, open source. Uh, depends on the country. You might have it in your local domain as well. They have lots of suggestions there. I would highly recommend you to read it from there. Honeypotproject.org. Or just go to Bing or maybe your other search engine, Yahoo, or uh, Ask. Something to ask Google, you know, and from there you can just use it, no problem. Uh, it will take you to this website. It has lots of suggestions there. Or if you want, uh, it's out of topic. You can go to our ENSA card, which we had again more than four five thousand uh, students. You can't do the exam anymore, but we talk about a whole honeypot session there. Please download the slides or watch the videos. Uh, you can access this via our uh, learning platform. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, James, can they just access it or do they have to still sign up on it? Sorry, I missed that last bit. You know, you've been a little bit watch quieter. our ENSA session from the, to download the materials. Can they access it with their current user and password or do they have to go to the website and sign up to the NSA class which we're not Oh, uh, the, the answer. Um, well, we can, we can post that. Uh, remind me, tell me which one that is and I'll, we can post that in the current course. Yeah, okay. I probably should get all of it and uh, put it in the extra materials to browse. They can just download it. All the videos are already in YouTube and our IT Masters PhD channel. You can watch it from there, okay? One more question, then let's finish the side tech because time is finishing up. Uh, a couple of people have asked what's the, what are the best approaches for minimizing zero-day threats? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> zero day is zero day. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's, it's not, I'm not going to tell anything different. Check the behavior of the software. Try to not, it's really hard, really hard. Make sure your software is up to date, any software you're using. Uh, it's really hard. So let me go through the slides, finish and come back because time is coming coming up. Uh, I don't want to hold you today. Uh, James had a really tough day, even me here. Uh, I came from Australia, it was what, 12 degrees when I left, and it's around 43 degrees today here in Manila. My body is, uh, at the moment, I'm in air conditions frozen and it's melted. More tools for you here. Rainbow Crack, I done the demo already for you. You know, you I clicked that Rainbow Crack option, I done a single or, you know, that was the demo. So how can you defend against password cracking? First of all, that's actually answering the previous question as well. And auditing. You can use MBSA, Marks of Baseline Security Analyzer. You can use Splunk, S-P-U-N-G, up to one gigabyte data is free. You can use GFI and Langard. I, I mean, uh, probably I should get, I'm going to contact GFI next week. 
I'm gonna do some demo for you guys. And I'm gonna do also demo, let me do trend analyzer from Tikuna. Really good demos that are coming in the next weeks, okay? Promise. Uh, do not use the same passwords in multiple platforms. <laughs> I think it's clear enough. Don't share your password, even with your wife or her husband. I know they're gonna get angry. And don't do what I do. <laughs> I, I think you got the message there. Do not use passwords that can be found in dictionary. And please don't test your password security on online website. Please. Don't. They do just a dictionary attack. They collect your information to use it in the next table. Please don't. Avoid storing passwords in an unsecured location. Last week I showed you Windows as a beautiful location if you're using Windows. Apple has it as well. I don't know what they call it. Linux, you can use some other tools. Set the password to change. I know you're going to hate me every two other days. Do not use key text protocols. Have protection against key loggers. Look, a key logger which I use, Zemana. Uh, anti Zemana. Uh, oh, where is my Zemana? Shortcut. Hmm. Where is it? Ah, yeah, here we go. You can download this for free from the website, Zemana. They are at the keylogger. I got the paid version. Uh, yes, I didn't pay for it. Uh, anti webcam logger, anti clip logger, system defense. It's quite good. All right? You can just use this. There are some other tools which you can use. Keyloggers. Uh, some of them are hardware. So how are you going to detect this one? Some of them, it's like keyboard. Some of them are embedded to a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's, be aware of those. And here are some key loggers for your Mac. Here are some key loggers for your Windows. I'm not going to talk one by one. Just uh, look at the slides after the session. So, I think now you understand why it's, why it's hard to defend networks. Because... The bad guy has unlimited resources. You have to protect the whole organization where the bad guy is working on that one application to hit again and again and again. They know you like free stuff. I'm not talking about you, but around 73% of the internet traffic is porn. Why do you think uh, there's lots of flash attacks? Are there be flash attacks? Why? Because 73% of the internet is using uh, some porn network. Again, uh, don't judge me. I'm not, you know, I'm just mentioning it. It doesn't mean you are using it. But if you have 100 people here, 73% is <laughs> just... Uh, attackers need to master only one attack. Where we, even if know who hacked us, we have to go through the legal channel. Defenders must serve business goals. Because you have a boss to manage, you have a wife to manage. The hackers, they don't care. Uh, if they get caught, they go to jail. But with us, you can't, you know, they're most there, they get it to do that. The funders, I mean, it's your job to win every time. And I know this is challenging. So is it a fact or fiction? Should you develop a secure process? Will this make you more secure? Should you just implement security process? Produce. Should you use recommended best practices? Should you train end users? Of course you should. You know. Should you patch, 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 and patch? Should you have a DMZ firewall? Yes, they're all facts, but they're not a single solution. You being in doubt, you being hope not to get hacked, you assuming you are not the right target is not going to make you more secure. So, the question here is, you should implement A. What should you implement? 
you should implement a strategy which has all of these inside. Remember, we did talk about reconnaissance, scanning, gain access, maintain access, and clean tracks. Remember, we talked about Maltigo, which was an active recon. And look what I'm doing here. I'm hacking my dear friend Milad Aslanar, uh, possibly via shoulder surfing. I'm just, uh, while he's typing his uh, password, I'm just checking his keyboard. And he's not even aware of it. Uh, we did talk about gaining access last week. I'm not going to talk again. We did talk about uh, maintaining access and steering tracks. I think by now you understand the importance. And it's really, it's really very, very important for, for you to see what happens out there. We have a beautiful forum post where people started to share some website. Please go contribute. Please, if not, learn. Uh, we have a beautiful website, itmasters.edu or csu.edu.au. Or you can go to my blog. You can go to, you know, I try to share as much as I can as well. So the idea is what we can do or what should we do. And there are... Uh, there are many stuff. Yes, uh, for example, Iguini has a beautiful point there. It says FireEye has very expensive stuff. Yes, true, but you know, the, everything comes in a price, right? Melba Sandex in comment. Yes, Bilal. Hi, Bilal. Merhaba. Uh, Marve Sandex in comment. Are you saying that Marve was contained by Jazz or I think he's talking to each other? So, any questions? Any questions? Yep. Yeah. Um, Joshua asks, sorry, what was Zamana used for again? It's the anti keylogger They are anti-malware company. Uh, it's just antivirus company. Zamana.com. Uh, I sh I use the. I mean, I'm using the keylogger to be honest. They gave it to me for testing. I like it. I never uninstalled it. And of course, they're happy. I'm using it because I'm sharing it with you guys. Zemana anti keylogger. Uh, they got anti malware as well. I, I got installed as well. Uh, you can try the 15 day trial once. Uh, it's, it's, it's not bad, to be honest. Any other questions while I'm browsing the questions? Yeah. Uh, yes, David. Um, Dennis, someone's... Yes? Sorry. Um, okay, a couple of people have asked if, if you will provide them with uh, secure tools. I guess a lot of people have the concern, and it's you know same as me, um, how do you know for sure what tools on the net are secure? And like <laughs> you said, it's all Can I be sorry? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Continue, please, sorry. I jumped in again as usual. So if you have any uh, suggestions, maybe we could put them up on the site, uh, especially ones that you've already got on your blog or whatever. Uh, for I did, uh, last week I showed you a forum post. Look, I'm using it as well, but can I give you 100% security? No. Unless I write the tool. Even if I write the tool, then you have to trust me. You know what I mean? You trust yourself. Yeah, I, I trust myself, but don't forget I'm a human. Probably I'm going to be sleepy. Uh, so, look, any developers here? Only against, being, only against being malicious, but maybe not accidental. Yes, uh, that's exactly Even what I mean. Copies? Most of the time, developers create the software not with security in mind. They add security later. I think this should answer the question. We should change the development strategy. We should have security up front. But I think for this we're going to need another 10, 15 years. Maybe hopefully faster, but it's just a bad guess. Yes, Mark. Um, there is a Tor designed now uh, for military use as well. Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, a fingerprint scan is secure. Are they useful? Sorry? Fingerprint scanners. What, what's your take on fingerprint scanners these days? Uh, last week we did talk about some of them. Uh, inbuilt to Maltigo. Ah, not Maltigo. 
Matigo was one of them, inbuilt to Firefox. Uh, I can't say they are secure, but I say they do the job. Or you can use, for example, he is a secure one, <laughs> not because of Microsoft, because I know uh, Mark Rosinovich good, and I know he will not bet, he will not do bad stuff. Uh, CD to to mi dot exe. It should just pop up. Come on. It didn't. Sorry, I was just teaching a class. You can do the who is as well, you know. Ah, finally. Yeah, agree. Should just pop up and come here. Uh, you can just use the inbuilt tools. Uh, you know, now when you look for something, you're going to do mistakes somewhere, so don't worry about the doing demo after this time. But uh, I think this is giving you some idea. You can use uh, sys internal tools or there are some other tools which I know they are secure. But again, I can't give you 100% guarantee of anything. Sorry. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, yep. Yeah. Um. What tips can you give on how to find out if you've already been hacked or infected, e.g. with a botnet? Check, check your logs. Uh, know your system. Try to find something, like when you're sick. I asked this question a few minutes ago in my master class. How do you know you're sick? Have a security baseline. A security baseline is usually the way to go. Microsoft has a beautiful product called SDM, Microsoft Security Configuration, or uh, Microsoft Surface Attack Analyzer, uh, which I can do a demo next week for you. Or if you want, go watch my sessions. I think it's in my blog. Uh, for the ones they missed it out, here's my blog. Uh, please go watch the sessions. Uh, there are lots of tools which we talk about. There are some uh, other like Splunk, uh, FireEye has some great tools but they're expensive. GFI has some tools but they're not free. Kali Linux has some tools but they're free but they're a bit hard to use sometimes. So uh, that's it. Any other question? Uh, I think I might have seen one more. Just a sec. Um, Google hacking is illegal in some countries. Is there a replacement for that? We are not actually, Google hacking can't be illegal because we are not hacking Google. We are just using uh, Google search techniques. That's what Google hacking is. Uh, so we are not Mohammed, hacking Google. Do you have a, a, a source for that, for the illegality of that in, in some countries? I can imagine a, a government uh, legislating against it, even if it's... Uh, uh, I can't, I, I never heard about it, seemingly. but here's a tool for you. Okay. If you go uh, hacking for charity, Hacking for charity dot org. Yeah. Uh, if you come, it's not advertised there. All what you have to do is Google hacking database, GHDB, enter. And if it's illegal, come and just press this. File containing password. Okay, I want that. Uh, with master password, click on this link here. As you can see, no. All right, example. Let me just do that. Open in a new window. As you can see, it went straight to Google. Instead of you typing, if this typing is illegal for you, just let the website do it for you. And probably look at this password of a website. Could be honeypot. I'm not saying this is correct. All right? Hacker index of FTP. 
So you can just get that. I think it's also, so is it also illegal? I hope not. As you can see, it's honeypot, fake. Uh, I hope it's not illegal. Yeah. Any other question? I think we might be about done. All right, I'm done too, to be honest. <laughs> All right, guys, please, if you go to Twitter, ah, let's do a live Twitter check. As we done last week. Did you start the Twitter about it already? Mm, no notifications. Oh, that's sad. Ah, oh, no, four notifications. Here we go. Great session. Ah, oh, no, this is actually, here we go, another resource for you. Uh, uh, I did not take any email for the webinar. I'm sorry, I did not understand what I'm trying. Listening to you. Thank you, Edward. 200 minus OFA. Yeah, feel free to, you know, tweet about it. Stop, stop, crime, second session. There we go. Actually, there are many stuff going on. Thank you, Daryl. Ah, that's how you look. You don't mind? <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. And uh, there it's that little website. Let me just close some of them down. All right, here's another free resource for you. If you go to marksofvirtualacademy.com, marksofvirtualacademy.com, there is a beautiful course which I run together with Milad Aslanev. Uh, you can go, uh, some of the slides probably you're going to see from me, you can watch this course totally for free and you will gain some marks of points. Uh, so you can just go and download the sessions, uh, watch the videos, download the PDF slides. It's, uh, you will get 15 bonus points uh, to do it where we talk about today's security landscape, principle of security, understanding your enemy, classes of hackers, what motivates hackers, pass the hash, Windows security, code. you know, you know, if you wanted some tools, they are here. You can download the slide deck. Uh, we done it uh, three weeks ago in Seattle. Uh, it was a live event. As you can see, uh, there is already close to two million activities. Uh, it was really good, so I had to complete my own course to get uh, my points. <laughs> uh, you see me and Milad done that, so this is also good for you, okay? Ah, they got even Twitter hashtag for me here. So, let me read it. So, feel free to use us. Ah, there we go, someone already went. Thank you, Sakib, and that's Sakib here. Uh, I'm happy that you're happy. So please use social media, uh, you know, spread the word out. The more people, the better it is, the happier I get. James, I think you too. That's great to hear. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Fanny. Thank you, Lee. Ah, that's, he's my student also from a um, master's class. All right, uh, that's it. I think we did send you already emails about information about uh, us, how you can join our master classes at IT Master Charles Sturt University. If not, please let me or uh, let me or James know. We make sure that the admin team sends you the information that you're after. Uh, okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Next week, what are we doing next week? I don't know. IT Masters Edu, a good website. What's wrong with our website, James? Ah, okay. Oh, that's not good. I hope it's at your end. <laughs> so I hope too. Check it here. I'm all good here. Are you sure? Yes. So it's Philippines, maybe. Uh, IT masters. I mean, I'm, I'm not glad. Uh, I want people in, ah, people in the Philippines to be able to see outside. <laughs> okay, uh, it's oh, that's beautiful. Better. It's connecting now. Anyway, uh, let me see. I don't know. Direct URL. 
Next week we're talking about what a good trainer. Since the making video talk about it, I'm gonna spend lots of time on Trojans and backdoors, viruses and rooms. I'm gonna see lots of demos. Okay? So and towards after next week I'm gonna start probably get you prepped for the exam as well. Uh, and you know you're all gonna get a beautiful certificate like this. Let me just show you. One more tweet just came through. Away. Thank you, away. Two more tweets. Terrell again. Thank you, dot net Olympians. Uh, here is the certificate. Just scroll down. It's somewhere here. I know. Ah, uh, that's the you know the recording when we done it. So you can go and watch it. That's people watching the recording. Uh, just scroll down a bit more. Come on. I know it's somewhere here. Come on, Erdo. Here we go. Uh, yeah, of course, it's going to be your name here. We're going to have IT Masters and Charles Tooth University. Probably my signature at this time. Uh, so, that's a certificate which you're going to get. Third from Charles Tooth University. With a sponsorship of IT Masters. A sponsorship or partnership. I don't know what you want to call it. IT Masters is CSU anyway. No difference. Alright. That's it. Thank you very much for joining. It was great. If you're watching this session offline, please feel free to use our forms. Uh, please, please, please uh, don't forget to tweet to LinkedIn or to, to Facebook us. We are glad to see your responses, especially if they're good. It makes us happier. If it's bad, if you can fix something, let us know. All right. Thank you, Scott. Uh, thank you very much again for everybody for joining. And I'm looking... I'm looking forward to see all of you next week, same time, same place, uh, when I say same place, I'm not meaning Manila, I'm meaning uh, online here. All right, thank you. And if Thanks, anybody everyone. is in Hong Kong, uh, I think end of the month, the last week class, it's going to run in Hong Kong. So uh, I know I'm got, I got some students, we're going to meet tomorrow from, uh, from, um, from Manila, but if you are Hong Kong based, we can meet in two weeks in Hong Kong. We can do the final class together. James? Mm -hmm. That's it? Yep. All right. Great. Thank you, Reynolds. Thank, thank you, everyone. Rafael. Really action-packed night. That was good. Good discussions. Sammy, I enjoyed it. You know, I did try to add lots of voice and action into it. But that's me. Probably by now you get used to it. Beautiful. Everybody, super helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of us. Um, we are glad to have you. Thank you, Joe McDade. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, everybody. All right. Uh, this recording will be available to you in the next 24 hours. And the information. See you all later. Okay, let me thank you, Adnan. I love you. He's a friend from Europe. Uh, thank you. Davi, thank you everybody. That's it. I need to go. I'm hungry. It's 7 o'clock here and it's dinner time. Talk to you all later next week. Bye-bye. James, bye. Thank you, Jay. Uh, thank you, Tina. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Alexa. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.